To invite you to our YouTube channel, All People's Church Bangalore. We are pleased to make a lot of resources available on this channel. There are numerous playlists uh, that include our Sunday sermons, our TV programs, our daily devotional called Living Supernaturally, and uh, also our Foundations course and several other playlists. 
a resources that you could use. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you can stay updated with all the new resources that are being released every week. And all of this is given freely to you to equip you live powerfully and victoriously for Jesus Christ. Enjoy these resources. Hey, I'm Rohan. I'm an architect, a freelance filmmaker, and I do theater. Hi, I'm Pooja. I'm a graphic designer, and I love art and music and fashion. Hi, I'm Joshua. I'm the growth lead at a medtech startup. I love playing the guitar, making music, and watching movies. I'm here today to try and understand what's okay and not with digital dependence. And I'm here to um, know about the freedom of expressing one's sexuality and preferences. With societal pressure, depression and suicide cases doing the news, I'd like to know if Christianity has something more authentic to offer. Thank you for tuning in to Living Strong and I have with me three fine young people. Over the last couple of weeks, we have been uh, taking a couple of topics and discussing them. We've titled it Finding Our True North, where we're looking at different challenging situations and finding the constant, uh, our only constant is the truth and life of Jesus. So our topic for today is anxiety and depression. Um, in, this, in, in what we face, we have seen that depression has risen over the many years as a mental illness. And uh, sometimes in our culture, uh, it is seen as a taboo or it's seen as something that can't be discussed about. And I see that kind, that kind of percolates into the church. We're confused on the way that we look at depression and try to make meaning of it spiritually. So we've opened the forum out to our young people on the show today to uh, bring forward their questions and uh, we will do our best to answer them in the light of the Bible, as well as uh, through practical measures. So it's opened out to you guys for questions. Uh, so I often hear people tell someone who's dealing with depression that um, it is because you lack faith that you are depressed or because um, God doesn't love you enough because the Holy Spirit gives us joy. Mm -hmm. He gives us hope mm -hmm. for everything. So mm -hmm. how do we, what is your take on how Christians should deal with depression? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, let me address what you had said right away. So depression is not the uh, lack of faith. It's not an emotional dysfunction. It's not because somebody is spiritually weak or is it, it, it isn't something that, that has to do with their faith. Depression, as we see it, um, is seen in very many ways. So, so, we, so the word is generally used very loosely. So someone can say they feel depressed with just um, feeling sad on a, on a morning to a pervasive sense of sadness, you know, feeling sad for over a period of time, or it's a, just a sense of misery. So there are very many ways that they, that they see it. But I'd like to present to you what is really studied. So when we look at depression, um, let's kind of look at it as... Um, as clinical depression. When you talk about clinical depression, it is a diagnosable medical condition. And it's a condition that uh, lasts for almost the whole part of the day for almost two weeks. And that's when you kind of categorize it as clinical depression. And usually depression is something that uh, arises as a result of a chemical imbalance. So when you're looking at clinical depression, there is there is a specific way of dealing with that. Another form of depression is called situational depression, where there is some kind of a life event or some uh, changing situation that, that kind of um, uh, affects the way that they feel. So these, these situations could be uh, death of a loved one. It could be the loss of something significant like a job, or it could be some life-changing situation that moves them to a state of depression. So when you look at it, it could be a situation that has led them into depression, but the depression, this, this emotional response to it could move into a chemical imbalance. So when someone's already depressed, the cycle kind of continues when they're emotionally 
uh, broken, it could lead into a chemical imbalance and it keeps going on. And often to cut that is what, what kind of gets difficult. So your main question was, how do we as Christians see depression? How do we, how do we understand depression? So I'd say we need to treat depression as it is. So if it has been uh, diagnosed to be a medical condition, we see it as it is. We also understand that depression also does have a spiritual element to it. It can be in the sense of the way that they perceive themselves. So it can also be as a result of demonic activity. So we're looking at different factors. So it's, it's a very multifaceted uh, illness and has many factors that, that work through that. So if you look through the Bible, it also talks about different places and we, can, we could probably deal with that as well. Um, that, you know, it talks about a crushed spirit, it talks about a broken spirit. So depression is something that is prevalent, that is relevant, that, that is there among, uh, among people. And how do we see it? One, um, to take the course that is, that is needed. So if it is a clinical depression, yes, it is necessary that they get medical intervention. It is important that, that they get that treatment. Or other options are, you have an, uh, options of counseling as well, especially in situational depression. Let's say with the loss of a loved one, they go through a sense of deep, um, a deep sense of loss, a deep sense of emotional turmoil. You help them with, with counseling as well. Now, to understand depression better, like I said, it's very complex. It, uh, it affects, th there is a physical source to it. There is a, an emotional source to it, there is a cognitive source to it, and of course, there is a spiritual source to it. So as believers or as Christians, we take depression for what it is and, and, and go with the motion of working through that. So if, if they do require medical intervention, you help with that. If they do require uh, counseling, that's something that you would suggest. Most importantly, no matter what the source is or what the cause is, we still put our faith in God to know that God heals just like he heals even a physical illness. So we need to understand, I mean, sometimes depression gets difficult to, uh, to understand because it's not as visible as a physical illness, yeah. right? I mean, you, your entire body seems perfect and fine, but it's, it's just your mental yeah. ability, yeah. right? So sometimes it gets difficult, but that does not mean we don't work through that. We allow, we are, we, uh, ask God and uh, ask, ask God to heal, even, even in a situation like that. Yeah, that's valid. Um, the question I have for you today is, uh, how should a Christian deal with their depression? Mm -hmm. uh, what, how should they act on it? Mm -hmm. And when do they know it's depression and not just them having a bad day? Okay, so as we spoke about, depression is very multifaceted. Right, and it uh, it is quite complex in the way that is that it, that it is. So when someone presents with depression, um, uh, like I like we had mentioned, clinical depression definitely has a time that is the person feels pervasively sad for most part of the day for at least two weeks. Right. So at a point of time, you do what you do when you have an illness is go to a doctor, and it's not a lack of faith. It's not a sign of, um, um, of, of not exercising what you believe in. It is important to go and get the help that, that you require. Often knowing the cause will help you understand what treatment is, is possible. So we do encourage that if, uh, people who, do, who have clinical depression to meet with a medical doctor, with a medical professional, get the help that they require and follow through with that treatment. So that's the first part of it. It can be followed by counseling as well. Because what happens in depression, there is a lot of negative emotions that keep building up. So the, the biggest symptom of depression is the spiraling negative thoughts that kind of sucks the person in to a sense of despair and despondency. And to be able to deal with that. So as the Bible very clearly talks about negative thoughts, it's to take captive those thoughts and you know, renew your mind. So through counseling, the, one of the things that is done is something called as cognitive work, where we help people to discuss the thoughts that they have. They could be negative thoughts like, you know, I'm hopeless, 
um, I'm useless, I'm good for nothing, there is nothing that is left in my future. Now these are thoughts that are very real for them, but sometimes there is no control over them. And the response is not to see those thoughts as, uh, not to see those responses or, or those thoughts as, uh, 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 you know, sinful, but to see them as a specific struggle that they go through. So to help them deal with those emotions. The third thing that a Christian can do is to understand what are some of the negative emotions that they have kept harbored inside. Usually resentment, ill feeling, anger are all um, places where depression can easily, you know, can, can latch onto. So that's another area where you look back and to look at what kind of ill feelings am I holding and come to a place of forgiveness. And that's very, very releasing for them. The last part, of course, is the spiritual uh, area where we're talking about how, um, uh, uh, in, in case it's a demonic activity, where you cast off that fear, cast off that. So either through prayer or, or you know, a collective um, uh, getting together of believers together to pray, right? And also to be exercising faith in dealing with depression, just like you would do in any other, any other sense of the illness. So we look at it physically, we looked at it emotionally, we looked at it cognitively as well as spiritually, and that's how we round it out for a believer. What does the Bible have to say about depression? Okay, um, so the Bible does talk about, like I've mentioned, you know, the crushed spirit mm. and the broken spirit. So uh, the Bible does reference many examples. So we'll probably take a couple of examples and see uh, how, they, how they respond. So let's look at one of the examples is Jeremiah, right? Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. And although there was a lot of strength in the way that he ministered, strength and faith, and you know, he was a, uh, he, he did what the Lord wanted him to do. But at the same time, you, you see that he, the people that he loved rejected him. You know, they, they did not listen to him. And uh, there is a verse in the Bible, there's a verse in Jeremiah that talks about, he says, cursed be the day that I was born, right? So he, he so, He's so much in despair and despondency that he talks about it that way. So you see the human nature actually just displaying out in there. Another example that we can think of is about David. You know, if you look at David's life, he was pursued by enemies. Saul, you know, Saul was after him for, for years on end. And uh, a lot of these Psalms have come in as a result of the times of desperation that he's been in. And um, if you look at Psalm 42, it, he talks to his soul. It's kind of a very introspective statement. He says, why are you so downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Right? And then he says, put your hope in God. So the thing with David is, the way that he dealt with what he went through was there was always a refrain of praise. There was always a song of praise. If you look through all his Psalms, he starts it off with probably a complaint, a heartfelt you know, uh, complain to God, but then, then there is always praise the Lord or, you know, put your hope in, in God or wait on Him. So, so that's, David is, is, a, is a good example. Another example we can think of, of is Elijah. Elijah is known as the Iron Man of the New Testament. And uh, if, you, if you follow through in his story, he had a victory with the, after the, um, a victory with the prophets of Baal. Right after that, Jezebel, you know, threatens him, threatens to kill him. And he flees. And he's so scared for his life that he goes and in despair he says, you know, God, this is enough. I just want to die. He actually says that, you know, just let me die. And Elijah being who he is, the greatest prophet for Israel at that time is who he is, came to a place of desperation. And of course, we cannot miss an example like Job. His name is akin to affliction and desperation, right? He lost so many things. So there was, there were a, there was a life-changing situation for him. He lost his children, he lost uh, his property, he lost all, all that he had, all his assets that he had, and gets to a point of just, uh, you, know, you know, throwing ashes upon himself. And in that, 
even when you look through Job, he responds saying, you know, cursed is the day that my mother bore me in her womb. Right? So these examples show you the depth of their hurt, of their pain. Right? So the Bible is not silent about, about sadness or depression. But yet we do understand that they were human. You know, and that gives us hope that this is the way that they, you know, this is the way that they express themselves. And God wants us to be honest about what we are going through. He wants to have an understanding of what our deepest hurts are. He does not want us to keep that aside. But what is encouraging is the way that each, each of these examples rose back to what they were doing. They, they stepped back in faith. They stepped back with the hope that God is with them, that God is the one who is promised. He will take them through whatever he had in for their lives. So the Bible has a lot of um, uh, gleanings that we can take from depression and also how we can really deal with that. Okay, so like you said, you should always step in faith and speak through faith. So if I know somebody who is dealing with de depression and suicide, how do I kind of minister to them? How do I kind of, you know, stop them from thinking these suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. or taking these drastic steps? Mm. That's such a relevant question, Pooja, and uh, I think that's um, an answer that, uh, that, that we really need to look into. So before I establish that, let's, let's um, just talk a little bit about suicide. Suicide can be a symptom of depression. Okay. Um, suicide can also be um, a, a reaction to certain emotional or relational issues that come about. Okay. So, Either ways, we treat suicide as something that, is, that needs attention. Okay. And um, often what, I, what we've noticed is that when, when someone comes face-to-face uh, -face with someone who is suicidal, it, it terrorizes people. You know, when someone says, you know, I just I want to die, I want to kill myself, they react in some form of terror or fear and... Uh, um, their questions or their responses could probably be unhelpful. We need to understand that um, when we're dealing with someone who is suicidal, we need to deal with them with compassion, with clarity, as well as conviction. Hmm. And what do we do? There are certain things that we need to be clear about. We need to be informed. We need to know um, uh, what, what is it that we need to do, what, what our specific responses are. So, so the first stance is to know that when someone does come to you and talk to you about suicide, it's, it's actually a cry for help. They, they want someone uh, to reach out to, to help them from the state that they are in. So how we respond to that is, is very, very crucial. Mm, giving sentences like, you shouldn't be thinking this way, or this isn't God's will for you, what about your children? are all unhelpful ways of dealing with someone who is suicidal. What is helpful is to have a listening ear and be empathetic towards them. They need to know that you are interested in what they are telling you and that you are there with them to help them out. So being sensitive but asking directive questions. So you'd probably ask questions like, um, you know, I've heard that people who feel upset sometimes come up to a point that they just want to give up their lives. Do you think you are in a place like that? In fact, asking a direct question has been researched and shown uh, uh, of the risk being lesser for someone to carry on with that suicide. So listening, being empathetic and being direct in the way that you ask questions. Now, once you have determined that someone may be suicidal, the next important step is to enlist support. When someone is suicidal, we ensure that they are not left alone. So we enlist support of, a, of maybe a family member, or uh, if it's a church member, you know, may, maybe a pastor or a counselor, someone, so that they are aware that there is, there is help that is made readily available. And the th third point is to be able to get them the help that they require. So like I did say, sometimes suicide could be a, a result of depression. So it may require them to meet with a doctor, to meet with, with, uh, uh, with some kind of medical intervention to help them tide over that, that point of time. 
And I think the most uh, and, and the biggest way that we can deal with it is to pray with them. Because I've seen often in my experience, just praying with them releases a sense of peace and restoration over their lives. So praying with them, encouraging them, and also letting them know that you are there walking through this alongside with them. Um, suicide is, uh, is a killer illness. And we see that happening. I mean, you open the newspaper, you will have so many uh, examples of, of people committing suicide. But it is that just being aware that someone there requires your help. And you may be the one that they're reaching out to. And what you, how you respond, how you, how you reach back would, would really determine the way that it keeps going forward. That's a huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So that's all that we've, uh, that's all that we have time for today. Uh, we come to the end of uh, another topic that we've discussed. Mm -hmm. um, shall we just pray together? Father God, we thank you for the wisdom and the counsel that you have in your word with the many examples that you have shown. Lord, we thank you because you are our rock. You are our strong fort fortress in times of pain, in times of despair, in times of despondency. You have promised that you are our shield and that when we place our trust in you, you will take us out from the miry pit. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, even, even as we minister to those who may be in depression or suicidal, that we will have the power of the Holy Spirit to deal with these things. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Strong. Do join us next time, even as we speak about conforming to world standards. Till then, live life the Jesus way.